Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. We're doing the uh, special Christmas edition. And uh, you may notice we're not live on Tuesday. Uh, but we got something for you. We are uh, uh, alcohol-fueled and ready to go. I am Mike Sorg. And uh, and uh, with me is... what? Well, where is he at? Where am I? Where are you? Hit the button. It's weird to find hey! the buttons. There he is, Rob De La Creta. Hi, Internet. Joined us in the studio. Is yep. this the first time you've been here in a year? Uh, <laughs> that's because <laughs> I pretty think that's possible. possible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's possible. Uh, when was the last? I was here when we demoed the 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 iPad appy thing <clears throat> with the guy. You remember that? It was like the last time we did a, an app demo on the show. What was that? Was it No Wait Guy? Yeah. All right. No. no. Wait. The last time we did an app demo in the studio was the uh, the children's game from. Um, that company. Geneva Mars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't here for that. No. no, no. I was. But yeah, the No Wait thing was the last time I was here. But there on the couch is Chachi. Chachi says dot net. How are you doing, Chachi? Couch. Or I'm no, in you're in a chair. I'm He's in, in a chair. old green chair. <laughs> He's in the green room, if you will. Yeah. There you go. How you doing, Chachi? I'm well. You're well? Let's get on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get back to Smash Bros. Right, Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> also join us on the couch, Norm. Whoops, there's the color. Norm Hulesman, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Oh, bye, Twixie. Yeah, Mr. thanks for having Derby. me back. No problem, no problem. I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he came back after last time. Hey, um, no, it's, it, was, it was a lot of fun, as always. Excellent. Dealing with stuff. And uh, on the line, join us again, uh, just acing his finals, Josh Sager, how you doing? Pretty good, yourself? All right, you're getting fuzzy. I don't know what's going on up there. Low bandwidth. Oh no! No. And straight, oh. straight from Boston. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? I don't know. That was your intro. <laughs> Someone just kicked the bucket. Sager, Sager started early. Uh, Jim Loke, like, the only guy probably wearing a Pens jersey in Boston. Yeah, and, and by the way, I didn't have the glasses on beforehand, but I felt like I should because everybody else did. I I noticed that. <laughs> I looked over. I was like, wait a minute. He didn't yeah, have these are real. They're real. I just I just felt like I had I had, I had to fit in. So, there you go. Okay. <laughs> wow. Way to nerd it up, Jim. Man. Glad well, you're part of the club. Yeah, we have a quota. You helped yeah, us. right. You exactly. helped us make that uh, nerd, nerd quota. A this pleasure. episode of Awesome Cast brought to you by Optics Magazine. Mm. Hey, iFly.com. 99 bucks. You punch in your prescription, you get the glasses in like a week. It's awesome. I do you one better. Zenioptical.com. $23. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it, it, did it include the lenses and all that stuff? Yep. Yeah. Is that like the wow. mono price of glasses? Yes, yes, Damn. they are. Yeah, these are these are the thick polycarb lenses with an anti-reflective coating as well. See, I have that. I have the thin ones, but I have the anti-reflective. Okay, enough, enough, enough about. All <laughs> hey, that's geek. That's tech. That's it's, it's that, that works. Not. Hey, that let's works. uh, let's let's nog it up. Let's knock it up. Nog it up. Nog it up. Nog it up. Let's. Uh, what sl- do you have here? You, you brought something <laughs> for the in studio. I did. This, uh, if you'll admire the lovely uh, Comic Sans here. Wow. Hey. It's too whited out. Oh, oh, I gotta get closer. Hold on, put it on, Norm, put, put it on Norm's camera there. Norm's camera. Norm's, Norm's camera, camera might be on handle. Yellow. No, not really. Mm. Oh, there you go. Little butter. There you go. Now I like... can tell you how appetizing it looks with that yellow tint. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say <laughs> that's kind of disgusting. Um, I, I feel like I, now I have to get involved. So uh, talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> um, ew. There's a little bit of nog on the outside <laughs> of this bottle. Mmm. It's tasty. So this is. Uh, this is homemade by a local person who shall remain unnamed. Hmm. Um, Why? His brother, uh, <laughs> because it's illegal to make alcohol in your home yeah. and distribute it. Um, his brother moved to Pittsburgh 23 years ago from Poland, and uh, he kept the family recipe for their eggnog. Hmm. And this is the family <laughs> recipe. Jim Loke is drinking straight from the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Getting classy with Jim Loke. <laughs> <laughs> I just happened to look up and I saw the him in the entire just bottle. Trying to, just um, trying to trying to trying to fit in here. So there's uh there's a lot of stuff in here and it's a secret recipe and it's incredibly strong. Gotcha. <laughs> awesome. It's awesome though. So uh cheers, John. Cheers. It smells pretty strong. Cheers. There you go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you are getting <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh. That's getting awesome. Ooh. It gets better by the day, it really does. It does? It does. How many days has it been sitting there? Um, I've had it since Friday. 
And the bowl is the bowl. The, bowl, the, bowl. <laughs> the bottle is holy crap. The bottle is three quarters Hold empty. On, let me chase this with some vodka. So, <laughs> and Norm's or not Norm, Rob. Rob's already drunk. Um, holy hell! <laughs> Rob's completely blitzed out of his skull. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it took. How, how you doing over there, Sorg? I'm doing good, and I gotta switch the rest of the night too. A little, little Bernie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I really like it. It's it's uh it's definitely got a great kick to it. Uh. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of vodka there, in There's that. a nice creamy finish, too. <laughs> there's a lot of vodka in this. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, so, no, I figured we'd talk about the year in review. Mm. Yes? Sure. Does that sound like a good idea, Robert? It was a terrible year. It was a terrible year? It was an awful year. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. No. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think I have something serious to say? Uh, what, the year in review? What happened this year, Mike? Um, Do you know? Do you remember? Some people did. Some There's a bunch stuff. of tablets. It was uh, 2011. Year it was of really. It was the year of the tablet wars. Yeah. So, you know, let me let me uh, let, let me start by telling you where we were last year because I was listening to, to our show, our Christmas show, a year ago. Have a seat. Have a seat. Uh, yeah, I will. And well, we we can move this stuff. Um, but a lot, last year we were talking about uh, Chachi was really big on the Samsung tab. Uh, I hated. Yeah. It. No, you were all about it. You were like. The Samsung? Weren't you? The one I played it to, played with at the Verizon store? No, you were tearing it apart. Yeah, but no, it was, was selling. Terrible. Everybody, it was selling. Yeah. That was the that was the news story. Um, that thing was a piece of trash. <laughs> but everybody was buying it at the time because it was the only one. That was the one that cost like a hundred dollars, right? Yeah, that was a yeah. cheap one. Yeah, yeah, and you could hack it. Oh no, no, yeah. no, no! The t the Samsung tab, the original seven inch, was like five hundred dollars. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So it and where are we now? Terrible. Where are we now? It was terrible. Um, I still don't know anybody besides, I, I don't actually like personal circle know anybody who has a Galaxy Tab. I know uh, Wheels, who joins us in the chat room, and I know mm -hmm. I know him personally, of course, but yeah, and he got his on Cricket. Yeah. So, I know uh, a lot of people who have an iPad. Yeah. I still don't have much of a use for my iPad. <laughs> but, but you I, have one. But I have one uh, because it was given to me. So there's that. You see AJ won one in the contest today. I saw that, yeah. So you can join the club. Yes, he can. <laughs> of having this thing that is really awesome, and I just can't find a use for it. I watch Netflix on it. That's about it. Everyone does. Okay. Well, I think that was the thing. I think when the tablets came out, I mean, I mean, the perception out there was, okay, what the hell are you going to use this for? And and, and I know when, when they first announced the iPad, I thought to myself, I have absolutely no use for it. I have a MacBook, but... You know, I got it, and then as the upgrades continued, then I said, "Okay, this 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 is this is more of a viable option than just carrying around my MacBook." So, I mean, it's for me. I, I use it for work. Um, in fact, when I was in Pittsburgh, I used it more for work because we didn't have any. You know, they didn't give us any any phones or anything like that. So, I was great. I could type it, type up scripts. I could do research in the truck with my iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, now, for the most part, I use it for um, you know, I use it mostly for social media and that sort of thing. But I mean, I really found found some legitimate use for it. Yeah, we use ours. Uh, well, we use ours for uh, teleprompter. We use ours to uh, Dropbox stuff, and we use. Uh, 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 I use it for email, Gmail. Whenever I have this this laptop rendering stuff, it's something I can just sit on the couch and you know yeah. check a bunch of extra stuff. I recently uh, got on, like we were talking about last week, got on Flipboard, like got on that train, mm -hmm. and it's it's really kind of changed how I look at Twitter and everything when I'm just yeah. like in more of a relaxed environment, you know. So I yeah, I've got a lot of uses Madden. for it. Work-wise, I mean, I use them every day at work doing development for them and in trade show application, interactive application. But as far as, like, sitting on my couch... You know, it's, 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 the, really... it's the thing, it's the cool thing to see out there and the easiest thing for people to pick up. And you mentioned trade yeah. shows. I think we talked about before where I was we were up at New York Comic Con yeah. and there was uh, an iPad in the side of this Transformers, like, mm -hmm. room thing for what they were doing for the next online game. And it was literally just an iPad and it was displaying, like, a code and information. Yeah. Not interactive. <clears throat> it was just display. Yeah. Displayed. You could have just put a sign there. Yeah. Really in the long run. Yeah, because it's incredibly easy for anybody to do it. So your development yeah. costs like falls through the floor and you can make like a pretty So great so dropping the five hundred dollars on one of those <coughs> is still cheaper than Well, you consider like the alternative. So you say like you don't have somebody dying. I think Josh is dying. Josh, right up there? Josh is dying. Do we need I'm to send dying here? Do we need to send somebody <laughs> over? Um, so you consider the alternative: you buy a PC or uh, a Mac, and then you stick a display on it. It's going to mm -hmm. be a touch display, so it's going to cost a good amount more than a regular display. 
and then you have to pay a developer to put the whole thing together. So you're already quite a bit in the in the bucket there. Or you get an iPad, six hundred bucks, and then you put a web page on it. Yeah. 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 And when I was it. in the more of the business world, we I would always use it in meetings because bringing your laptop to a meeting was a little bit more taboo, but you could bring mm-hmm. an iPad and it was just it seemed more acceptable that you would be typing away and you didn't have this screen blocking you from the rest of the people around the table. And, um, you know, that was, that was, I always had it in meetings and I was able to take notes and, and integrate right into my, um, the rest of my working life. And I want, I, I don't have one now, but I want, I feel like I want one. I think I could use one two or three times a week. It, it sounds like it's more acceptable in the business environment. Sure. Um, it's, it's definitely, um, like, like I, I've started taking to meetings at Emma and my clients and like, you know, they, they're, nobody has one of those except for the wakey lady. Started bringing one in. Huh. Um, and did you see um, last week, actually, when I was in New Orleans, I think is when I tweeted it, about how a lot of people are now referring to anything that is a touch display as an iPad? Really? So it's kind of got the Kleenex effect the Xerox, going yeah, on. Xerox, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be the Xerox machine or the, you know, the Q-tip or whatever is what a lot of people brought up. Because I, um, for the interactive I was working on, I had two 42-inch touch screens. Not easily confused with an iPad, but I had like not one, but several people who I'm like training to use the thing and they keep calling it the iPad, the iPad, the iPad. You know what though? And then, and I've had this experience with interactives consistently. Really? This is not a hedge case. So, I mean, you know, kind of like the phone, the, the, the iPhone did the same thing. So the, the pad is doing the, bringing it to the general population yeah, really, and they're the seeing iPad, the yeah. commercials even if they're they they do not have one yeah the general person is seeing the commercials on tv mm-hmm. and they've just kind of be that versus what you see with droid right and it's just I like mean, when like if you were to explain um a device to someone who is not really involved with tech in if you're AI. explaining a touch device something that like even your mom would understand is it's like the ipad yeah 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 because, like, they may have not seen it, but they've heard about it quite a bit. They've seen the commercials. They've seen the articles in the newspaper. It's in the news, like yeah. yeah. It's in the news nonstop. And uh, something I was reading uh, earlier today, actually, was that the uh, Apple actually is responsible for a large portion of the Galaxy Tab's popularity. Because the only reason people pay, like paid attention to it is because it was the only thing that actually fought up against the iPad. If the Galaxy Tab came out before the iPad... It wouldn't have sold. Is it cheaper, even, or or is just because they go walk into whatever store and they see that instead? It's because like, the Galaxy Tab generally sucks, <laughs> mm. but it brings it into like there is now. Before the iPad came along, there wasn't an arena for tablets to exist. Mm-hmm. But now that like the iPad has kind of forced everybody's hand, because like we're talking about for the personal use, there's still no use case. Mm. We would like to think there is, and it's all in like. You know, sitting on your couch. And well, it's also Netflix. becoming like the new cash register too. I mean, which oh, is sure, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. huge, huge. Product video production. There's a lot of uses going in for that. Yeah, but for, they're all for low they're all niche stuff. cases. Yeah, but one. well, you know, something like video is a niche case. But I mean, look at the commercial that they have going around, where like they're using it in medical, they're using it in education. I mean, I build these things. I know. I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's our lighting it's designer uses it to covering, control the DMX it's lights. It's covering a lot of niches in the long run. Sure, well, it's a tool. Yeah, that's what, yeah. that's what struck me back in what when did the iPhone three G come out? Was that 07 or 08? The original, like the the second iPhone three. Yeah, the second iPhone. That was I think it was 08. It was 08. Okay. Yeah. I, I, the reason I the reason I mentioned that, and I, I in fact I'm pretty sure you're right there because I covered that. I, I was over over in Shady Side when the, when the iPhone three G came out, and that was I talked to people who their only reason for going in and buying that was because that's when Apple just rolled out the App Store, and people were seeing those niches that hell you know I can use this for, for I can use this at the hospital for to check prescriptions and things like that. I think, though, to go back to the point about the Galaxy Tab, I think one of the reasons it also gained some popularity popularity initially was because Verizon was pushing that. They did it, it, At that time, they didn't have the iPad. They, they oh, weren't yeah. selling the iPad in their stores. They were pushing people towards the Galaxy Tab. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh, I'm sorry. I think I just muted you for the last, like, five minutes. Did you have anything to chime in here? <laughs> Not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay well, you, you were, you were having tough times. So I, I left you off the, the, the mute hook, and I, I, I forgot to bring it back. Um, but anyways, you fail. sorry, You're sorry. 
Um, but yeah, it, it really is. A, I, I think this is this is the year it kind of I mean, we saw like the piles and piles of tablets. Everybody's trying to compete. Yeah, this was the year of like, I mean, the real tablet wars. It wasn't just yeah. who's going to come up with something that can compete with the iPad. It's here's the playbook, and oh my god, it's awful. And mm-hmm. here's the Galaxy Tab. It was like which every we've month, heard over and over again. Every month was a new tablet of failure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not. To Have point. you guys heard about the uh, iPad Minis? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like frosted shredded wheat minis? No, check it out. It's on uh, news.com today. News.com, really? Oh, I, mm-hmm. I, I thought I thought this was the iPad. I thought this was the iPad. Yeah, I was gonna say I've got one of those right here. <laughs> Yeah, there's a rumor that an, the mini iPad is going to come out to compete with the Kindle Fire. And I think the Kindle Fire is about the closest tablet to compete with the iPad. Its price is really good, and it's mm. it's a really great reading device. Well, And, and I, I know I read that Steve Jobs was adamantly opposed to ever doing a, a, a mini iPad. Do you think now that, he's, now that he's gone that we're going to see some things that he was so adamantly opposed to suddenly come to fruition? Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I think it's going to be a little bit because uh, I'd say it's going to be a while. It really seems like the plan is already set in motion for me the next year. Yeah, maybe even a little bit longer. But yeah. I mean, there's definitely room for people to kind of step in and and because realistically, in the Apple development cycle, by the time you get version three in your hand, version six is already in the dev shop. Yeah, yeah. even for hardware. Yeah. So for us to see something that Steve Jobs was absolutely opposed to in a in an atmosphere in which, um, you know, everybody at, at Apple drinks Kool-Aid to a degree, like that's why Tim Cook is in the position that he's in is because Steve Jobs saw him as somebody who completely agreed with all of his philosophies. Mm-hmm. So I doubt. Hey, Sorg, are you on GChat? Uh, I am. <laughs> here, here's the link. Okay. Yeah, I just I just pulled it up myself here. I'd be right, really surprised here. if in the next three years even we see things that people look at and say, oh, Steve Jobs would not be happy with this at all. Mm-hmm. because he's already signed off on the next two versions of every piece of hardware you're going to see. Well, sure. And, you know, you got to think about how Apple has marketed themselves over the, year and what, over the years and why they're in the position they are, which is, you know, ex- exclusiveness. And, uh, Josh, I think your point is interesting about the Kindle, but I, you know, I don't necessarily see Apple making a device that's cheaper for, you know, the l- lower-end consumer or, you know, that, that middle pr- price point because, they That's not their have, audience. Yeah, they've built themselves. They why did the iPod work? The first iPod. You know, we've seen so many case studies since the past. You know, everybody kind of rehashing this. And <clears throat> they built their brand on this higher le- higher end, higher tiered market, and they're exclusive and they were the premium, and everybody saw it, sought it, and wanted it. And that, you know, people always always say, "Oh, I'd love to have a Mac or an iPod, iPhone or iPad, but I just can't afford it." But it creates this higher level mm-hmm. thought. You know, thought and brand aware association when you when you have these products. It's a so, gateway drug. But the Kindle is a brilliant device, and what it's doing is so focused, is and it's really cool. I think what they're they're carving out their own niche and their own market, and and it's it's really cool to see where that's going. I do think it can compete with the iPod or the iPad because, you know, reading on an iPad when I had one was difficult. It wasn't as yeah. nice as the you know, as the Kindle device. But, you know, who knows? Obviously, Apple's really smart about what they're doing and marketing these things. So, but Don't you remember when they first rolled out the iPad in the first place and it was just a, every every article that you read about it said that, okay, this is going to be, this is the competition, this is Apple's answer to the Kindle. But at this point, I mean, iBooks is so so minuscule of, of a selling point for the iPad anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Yeah. Um, Still, as we talked about that a few times, it's as like they try to push it <clears throat> and if you look at the number of deals that they crack with publishers and the amount of books that are actually available in the iBook store it is like a phenomenally huge number and yeah. still for a fresh device around a fresh restore you open the app store for the first time it says hey don't you want to download the iBooks application for or free? Or how about the newsstand I can't get rid of on my uh, on all my iDevices, <coughs> which is right. just sitting there empty. And yeah, some, the thing is... I the, can't even put it in a folder to get so rid of it. So the thing is... Easy killer. <laughs> the, you know, the, the iBooks application is not built in. Yeah. yeah. They use that first step as, as a reminder of, hey, you can get books on this. I don't know if you could get books on this, but you can get books what on this. What came first, though? Did the iBooks or Kindle come first? Uh, Kindle. Kindle, yeah, Kindle. Kindle, Kindle. came first. Kindle. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, Kindle's it was been around for a, a, the Kindle's been around for for a long time. I think I mean it's been. A, I, I remember when it first came out, and that was pushing four hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think at that point, you know, Sony had an e-reader for, I remember years ago, RCA had an e-book reader and nobody wow. bought them. But, and it took a while for, for, for the Kindle to get critical mass. But once, you know, once Amazon was off and running with that, and I mean, it's amazing. You can go buy one for 79 bucks now. Yeah. They're yeah. so dirt cheap and they're so polished. Yeah. And people who consider themselves non-tech people really enjoy their Kindles. And I think that that's a huge. Yeah. My mother-in-law loves it. Can you tweet that link about the iPod, iPad mini? The original Kindle came out in November 2007. The same year as wow. the uh, first iPhone. The first iPhone. <clears throat> Is that the first oh, iPhone? Wow. Yeah, 2007, because the 3G wow. came out in 2008. So. Isn't it hilarious how far we've come in so few years? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. You know, I think, in, well, so let's let's get back to this year in review, right? So iOS came out, and I'm a huge fan of iOS. The, and the I think new one. And I think it works great. Yeah, yeah. iOS five. And Except for when you try iCloud. to use Siri, not not to. <laughs> Siri, Siri has its fun, right? You know, they they it's really good. And I've seen some comparisons of other services on other devices. And Siri can. It took Siri a, a little bit to learn my voice and how I talk to it. But apparently, once, it still hasn't quite figured that out. But one and once it <laughs> no no it told me it wasn't going to do what I asked it to, but it knew what I asked it to earlier. So oh, so it's just insubordinate. When exactly. You, okay. So I I just okay. haven't I haven't. I haven't learned how to teach Siri how to fear me is the problem. <laughs> and, and you need to, te- you know, it's like a dog. Well, so, all right, no, no, I'm getting way off. Anyways, no, so, but iCloud and um, the, the the new, you know, Lion came out and, you know, for the people who subscribe to the Mac world, like myself and ha- live in that ecosystem, it's great. I'm really a huge fan of it. Um, and I think, you know, it just brings everything together the way Mobile Me was trying to do, the way, Dot Mac was trying to do when they still had that, and these services work now, and they're really good. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I'm really happy with iOS. I'm still still trying to use iOS to replace all of my my music files with the upgraded versions. And I found if you want to do the thing that I was talking about, mm-hmm. uh, pro tip. So what I was doing is I uploaded all of my music from all of my different volumes to um, to iTunes Match or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, Match <coughs> whatever. So I just specified those volumes as my iTunes library. So it saw it, recognized the library, uploaded it, and then I deleted all of the files because it's all in the cloud now. And then to get it all back down in like clean, organized fashion, I just tell it to re-download everything to my Drobo as a backup. But, so I set my Drobo as the location for the media. Every time I unplug my Drobo, it resets the location for the media to my hard drive on my laptop. So I'm not downloading 12,000 songs a shot here. I'm doing like 1,000 songs and then unplug, do some work, go away for a couple of days and come back and then see my entire music collection completely destroyed. Oh, wow. So what I need to do, I think I'm actually going to borrow a computer from work and hook it up to my Drobo <laughs> and just tell it to download all 12,000 songs to my Drobo at once. Okay, but what, what Comcast about... Comcast hates what, me. What about for the normal person? What, what about the normal That's version? That's using iTunes Match. <laughs> oh, then it's great. You probably don't have 12,000 songs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Shadow told me he had thirty five thousand. Thirty five thousand. Yeah. Well, Shadow's not a normal person. And I, well, I, because I just, I just uh, digitized all of my CDs uh-huh. recently, and I have six to seven thousand. Yeah. So I guess I'm more of a normal person, but I haven't subscribed to the yeah. iTunes Club yet. I have like fifteen records. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get them. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> is this like the time I pulled out the cue cat? Yes. <laughs> that's what this is. Oh, they're right there. <laughs> Here you go. I have that one. Hey. What is that? I have this that is one. This is an iron butterfly. In okay. a Gata de Vida. Wow. Yes. I, wish um, I think I have that face. one. I erased his face. Nice. Wow. You have a solid George collection. George Michael. These That's are the classy awesome. ones. Yeah, they're amazing. You can get them for like $2 at Half Price Books. Yeah. Is, Fr- is Frant- Frampton comes alive in there somewhere? Oh. No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> I should get it, though. I should put it on the list. But I thought everyone had Frampton Comes Alive. I thought it was sent out in the mail with samples of Tide. <laughs> I'm glad somebody picked up on that. Wow. Awesome. Well, that's another thing. I mean, the music. The music really changed this year, too, right? I mean, between iTunes, Match, Google Music. This is more recent, of course. Spotify. You know, yeah. uh, before, I mean, really, was there anything else other than Pandora that was really doing well? I mean, what we, what we had, like, Rap. Last of them. Last FM, I guess. Yeah, like that last FM and uh, MySpace radio. There's MySpace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, RDO or radio or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's actually. Um, I wonder what happened to them because 
I think we talked about how like everything was free. Remember, they sent out that email to all of their members saying that everything was free. I never remember how to spell them. R D I O. Yes, that's it. It's not complicated, man. <laughs> man, I hate these Web 2.0 <laughs> names. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's RDIO Speedwagon, right? Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Exactly, exactly. I'm They're still around, so unlimited <laughs> music everywhere, no ads, get it free. So, yeah, why didn't that take off? I don't know. I mean, that only happened like two months ago when they tried weren't, to make it. Weren't you playing with this or AJ or something? Ah, uh, I played with RDIO for a while, and I decided I didn't want to pay seven dollars a month for that. Okay, service. Was, okay, okay. Um, and then Spotify opened up, and uh, we, we talked wait, what about Groove Shark? Oh wow, Groove Shark! I remember Groove Shark. What's Groove Shark? <sighs> what? That what? was so Come on! Come on. Come on. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I was Groove Shark to... was Spotify. I was listening Spotify to my. I was in the U.S. I was listening to my uh, CDs and uh, Groove Shark was like 2008. you know show me our, all your George Michael tracks. Oh yeah, That's and then right. let's 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 listen listen to some music. Here it is. It, oh, it just it just looks like it's just like a search engine, right? Yeah, isn't it? Oh. Kind of like Spotify, right? Rebecca Black, do it. Yes, uh, do it, do it. And our YouTube gets pulled. Do it. And you know what? It's Friday. It is Friday. It is Friday. <laughs> Indeed it is. <laughs> but, you know, another rap that I think that, that took off this year, although it has been around for a couple of years, and I think that they've done a great job, is iHeartRadio. I mean, as, 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 as evil of a company as Clear Channel is, yeah. they really, they, I mean, they really did the last update right. Now I haven't been on the new update. What have they done differently? Well, there, I mean, there, it, 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 there's more. It, it's more of a social component to it. I mean, you know, you can get the annoying scroll on Facebook that says so. And you know, Josh Sager is listening to George Michael again um, <laughs> on, on that little on that little scrolling bar. But I think it's that um, they, they made a little more effort to integrate more local content into some of those channels. Uh, I think Mikey and Bob don't have a channel yet on there. I know the DVE Morning Show does, but you know. They're, they're making an effort to to make it a little less homogenized by putting in some some sort of local element in there. So I mean, it's not a bad thing. Mm. Um, and and they've expanded a bit too because uh, I know with the new uh, Xbox update, uh, iHeartRadio is something that got added uh, just yeah. in this past week. So I can listen to radio on my TV. There you go. That's the perfect marriage, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, and and plus the story we had about um, the CDs will stop pressing. I I don't know. Was that all the CDs or just the big labels? All of them. Was that was all, all of the? Of that was the the big labels have said. Big that labels have said that. But there hasn't been like there hasn't been a whole lot of talk about it. It was just kind of like a low rumbling. But it makes sense. It genuinely yeah, yeah. makes sense. It could it could very well be. I mean, you're seeing that shrink as it is in the Best Buys and the WalMarts uh, these days. So you know uh, the. It isn't iTunes is like the number one music seller period now, right? The, but the funny thing is, like worldwide, I think iTunes still only accounts for like twenty percent of all music sales. So, so who does the rest? Just like other everybody local? else. Columbia House. Yeah, Columbia House. <laughs> BMG. You know, you get that flyer and you just cannot resist the check boxes. <laughs> Eight CDs for the price of one with nothing more to buy ever. <laughs> hey, what about bar jukeboxes? I bet you they make a lot of money. Oh sure. Well, now they're all like on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Because so. you can get any song you want. Yeah. Well, and, and have you seen that thing where it's like, hey, you can get your song, but if you want your song to come up before somebody else, you can pay like $2. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can totally jump yeah. the line. Priority. Well, that, that, that's how I got to play Wilson Phillips at the at the North Park Lounge after one of uh, one of uh, Mr. Pibb's triumphant wins over Mellow Yellow during this season. <laughs> <laughs> what I like to do with the bar jukeboxes is you wait until like all the, the frat boys come in. And then you find the longest Dream Theater song on the jukebox. <laughs> it's like, Bringing it back to Yin's team, I think Jim Loke drafted an amazing team this year. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's masterful. Wow. Yeah. It was a good way to go out, you know? Listen, <laughs> yeah. in, all, in all fairness, whoever gets the first pick is going to draft an amazing team. What? Because they're going to draft you. Well, I mean, I do okay, I guess. <laughs> And I, I want the record to show, though, this year's leading hitter was not Josh Sager. It was Norm Hulsman. That's right. See? That's right. That's only because I didn't even get to play. And we were really not sure if we were going to draft Norm because we figured he'd have magic uh, on, on, on Fridays again this year. Speaking of magic, uh, and since <laughs> it's Christmas time, 
Upon no. entering the uh, <laughs> Mayhem Studio, I was uh, awarded a pack of magic cards. So thank you. Oh, I actually yeah, have. Don't don't leave without more magic cards. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and, they, and, yeah. and you, viewers at home, if you have magic cards that you want to send me, uh, just email me. At Although I was told Mac. not to give you any more magic cards by somebody because you you Whoa. You, you own them. Whoa! Whoa! Sorry, I just looked. The, the pens were down two one. It's tied three three now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go pens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's magic. That's magic. If you ask me. <laughs> that's real magic. Well, there was a lot of crazy stuff that went down on the internet this year. Yeah. No. Yes, I have a list up right here. Do you have a list? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wait, is that oh, on paper? It is. Did we talk about I, I'm analog? You know, he's you know he's that, about man? to point his finger. Hang on, guys. Where's a laser pointer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so right SOPA, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. 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 It is. Um, it's currently uh, being withheld and not going anywhere, which is good news. Uh, it's absolutely good news. Responsive web design was super huge this year. Um, this was not the year of HTML5. That was last year. This year is the year of CSS3. A lot of people started using it and embraced it and did a lot of really super cool stuff. And it was also the year of JavaScript. Lots of crazy JavaScript stuff went down. HTML canvas, um, particles, explosions, and smokes, and all sorts of stuff. So the Internet was booming this year with all kinds of creativity uh, this is just to, to kind of narrow it down what does that mean for my grandma <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> <laughs> oh okay <laughs> so, we're, no, we're in a transitionary was... period right now yeah, yeah. as the web developers so we, we're making like particle systems explosions you know like the stuff that you like when you're like 10 yeah yeah okay I mean, that, that's a start i think you could also say that this was the year that um uh the companies that make the browsers as a whole, started taking making browsers to standards a lot more seriously. Oh, yeah. How many Firefoxes came out this year? Like 14? Something like that, yeah. 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 I think we just launched uh, 15 for Chrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think but, but they, they, like they've been Chrome's always kind of been everything. there, but so. even Internet Explorer is about to drop. Uh, is this for real? Because they've said that before. Also, big news. Hold on to your pants, IT professionals. Um, Internet Explorer is going to start doing silent automatic updates. I know. Yeah. Which means they're going to be rolling out a lot more updates. Hopefully. That is something that affects your grandma. It does affect your grandma. That's it's 4 there. 3 now. Because her bank yeah. is not going to update their website nope. to web standards. Nope. And one day she's going to open her browser and she won't be able to, you know, send oh, even you money better. on the internet. Even better. Yeah. I don't know how to put my debit card into my computer. <laughs> 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 Jim, That's why you just Jim Loke's it. grandmother face is amazing. Uh, Can I just say that? My grandmother's dead, you jackass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry>. <laughs> they both are, but that's beside the point. Huh? Oh, wow. Some guy came into the bank this year when I was there, and he waved his card around. He's like, there's six dollars on this here, and I'd like to get it. <laughs> 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 well, even the banking has been kind of turned a bit because uh, we had the the debit card thing. We have uh, debit Square is getting big. What is yeah. the debit card? The thing? Deb well, uh, was it Bank of America was going to start charging five dollars for Ooh. debit card users that got yeah. turned? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't use that terrible bank. So. No, I don't either. Is there even any Bank of Americas around here? Yeah, it's yeah, it. probably. Yeah. Well, there are AT Bank of America yes. ATMs. There's no branches in Pittsburgh okay, okay. yet. Um, okay. But, you know, one app that, that I've, I've grown to start using up here, and I've noticed when I came back into town a few weeks ago, is that it hasn't rolled out yet, but, but I found a, a good use for it. Is, uh, it. You guys heard Level Up? Yes. Okay. I, I've, I've been using Level Up so far. Um, I actually used it yesterday, and I think it's fantastic because, I mean, I got invited to use the app by a buddy of mine who lives up here. Almost every restaurant gives you some sort of dollar amount for using it for the first time. Whether it's you know a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, up to ten, twenty dollars. So you know the first time you use that app, you're gonna you're gonna get a free lunch out of it, depending on where you go. Wow. Um, but beyond that, it, it's a great way to build brand loyalty without these businesses having to set up their own programs. Because if I spend fifty dollars at the pizza place up the road from here, I get five bucks back. I mean that's you know that's a nice little trade off there. How much money do you get if I spend fifty bucks at the? Uh I, I think it. I think it's only based upon the first time you use it. So if you, it, you, it, you know, if you invite me, I get five free dollars, and once I use that five free dollars, you'll get the five dollars in return. And I think beyond that, right now, it's just yeah. all you're earning for yourself. Mm -hmm. I but the setup, it's great because uh, it looks. I think what they do is they give the businesses a BlackBerry or some sort of. I think it's a BlackBerry setup, 
in which they can go in and, 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 and they set up on the counter so they don't have to, 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 to expend their own cell phones or anything like that to scan. Um, but it's, it's good here because there's a lot of food trucks in Boston. I mean, the food trucks are huge up here. And a lot of the food trucks will use Level Up to, um, to process payments. Hmm. I kind of wonder how this competes with the, um, the Square wallet function where you can pay places using your phone well i mean square has a little bit more of a because we've been we've been playing with it at the cafe and uh it's it's a little more of a you have to pay with your credit card the first time then you Uh get a text message you got to link that download it it's been a little hard to explain it to some people okay but somebody came in with their android phone and said they were up the street and it has to say it it does the gps to make sure you're close to the square that we're using so it pops up So, I mean, I think it's still a little bit around, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's still coming I mean, around. I mean, the stuff has but, a long I mean, way to go. But it's a, really, it's a really nice feature if you get it working. I but, think this stuff is going to make a lot more sense when NFC is in all of our phones. Near field communication. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is coming up in the Google phone. Which already. is coming up in the Google phone. And I would be, uh, like I said, when everybody was talking about iPhone 5, I feel like the knock it out of the park feature for iPhone 5 is really well done NFC. That's when people are going to start moving their wallets into their phone. Now, help me out. In, with NFC, like, I have the uh, pay pass, I think it is, in my credit, my debit card. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, that's NFC too, right? That's the yeah. same technology. So, pretty much. Technically, yeah. all those, like, I use it at Sheets. Uh, well, McDonald's has it. A couple mm-hmm. other random places have it, mostly chains, mostly The, the ideal stuff. implementation. But, 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 but ideally, if I had this phone, I yeah. could use it at all the same places. Yeah, the ideal implementation is that you would have a wallet application on your phone, highly mm-hmm. secure, 256-bit encryption, all that good stuff. Um, and it would just, like, you'd go to pay for something, and it would pull up, like, your bank account with your debit card, whatever credit cards you might have, anything you can pay for. Even if, like, you have, like, an Exxon gas credit card, you could put that in there, mm-hmm. and that's only a card you can use at Exxon to pay for your Exxon gas. Yeah, yeah. You would be able to open and up they the have app, those too. select it, and then swipe your phone instead of a card or the speed pass thing that mobile uses. Or so, whatever. so we swipe your phone, which you're not supposed to have by the gas pump anyways, because uh, static electricity get me started. So. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody so. shut my gas off one time because of that. Really? Yep. Wow. But like four years ago, I was pumping gas and I had my phone out, and they just stopped. And I'm like, hey, what the hell? They're like, you can't do that. It'll explode. <laughs> Oh no! Oh god! I you should tell people. them to watch MythBusters. Yeah, yeah, or learn to learn a thing. <laughs> That's what I would say. Learn a thing. go learn a thing. Learn anything. Just pick a thing. Just get started, please, because you're not in a good place. <laughs> there is at least one gas station in Pittsburgh that still um, you can still pump your gas before you pay it. Yeah, uh, it's somewhere in Millvale. Huh. And it there's was, that one full service place because, in, because in I in tried to prepay and they're like, oh no no no, we don't do that. We don't. They refuse it. Was it? Oh no, we don't do that. Or was it? Oh no, no, we don't do oh, that. Oh no. <laughs> Always the offense. No, these were Ginsers. It was so. It was a yeah. In that, yeah. go pump your gas in that. And Did they call that. you a jagoff? No, they were they were cordial. They were they were that's cordial. Good. They were cordial that's good. That's good. Cord- they're right next to the beer distributor down there. Cordial, cordial Yinzers. That's a mouthful. <laughs> cordial Yinzers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Their parking chair has doilies on it. <laughs> uh, speaking of iPhone apps, um, uh, application that has made me the angriest so far this year after last week when I said it wasn't that bad. Actually, this week. Are we, are we censoring the show this week? No. Fuck Twitter. <laughs> All right. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. It is pretty annoying. I was going to mention I am done with Twitter. I'm done. Really? Not with Twitter as a service, but Twitter as an application. Done. Okay. I give up. I, and I know uh, iPad, like I was watching iPad t- t- today and they were like, so if you don't like the new app, here's what you can use. Yeah. So, but it, unless you're using TweetDeck apparently. Did TweetDeck finally come around? I know AJ was on Twitter cursing that up and I'm down. A TweetDeck person. I have officially switched to, I had installed uh, doop-a-doop-a-doop. Tweetbot a while ago uh, when John Gruber from Daring Fireball recommended it, and uh, and I tried it out, and I was like, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay with, with Twitter as an application, so I'll leave it there, but I, I really got sick of how many button presses it gets to my direct messages, and I will never, ever, ever use the Discover tab, ever, oh. mm-hmm. ever, follow Friday. Come on. <laughs> really? Follow- that comes yes. up? Anything, but it's there right now. It's, see? 
You can't see that, but that picture is related to Follow Friday, and you care. And and, and it looks like they're doing the the uh, we're gonna super crop this picture like every other app right. does. Yes, it, it it's ah, uh, and uh, <laughs> so it shows you trends. Who to follow? Oh, here's a good one. If you saw my angsty, I saw your tweet. I, saw, tweet I think earlier. I had Siri. I, I think I had Siri read your tweet on this on the way home. It was so bad because like it says who to follow. It gives you three people for suggested people to follow. I'm sure it does this on Twitter.com too. Yeah, but I never use in the browser. Um, and uh, I look at a person and they're like, oh, I'm a developer, whatever. And I'm like, oh, reading their tweets. This person looks interesting. And then I realize that they haven't tweeted in 800 days. <laughs> 800 days. 800 days. That's over two years. It's it two and a half years. Yeah. Was Twitter even around 800 days ago? Yes. Yeah. Twitter's been around since 06. I know. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, we got, uh, I actually like the well, new, see, the new, the redesign on the web mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. So the web design is much more cleaner, and it makes yeah. more, it, it does. It makes more sense, and it and it it seems it much more functional than it did before. Yeah. But um, yeah, that app is is so is. Just, bad. And the one thing I miss the most is the fact that you know when you on the old app when you started punching up a tweet, and if you realize you're doing, you know, I have three accounts. Um, if I started, it's for three of my split personalities. And when you put it, put it, when you start composing the tweet, you were able to go in and change what account you were tweeting from. And I believe that is not the case. Even if you want to just switch your account, it is so incredibly it's difficult. It's so cumbersome to do it. You have to, let's see, you have to hit me and then switch accounts and then it does a flippy thing and then you hit your new account. So what apps are, so what Twitter apps are you using now? I'm using Tweetbot now, and okay. I'm I'm very happy with Tweetbot. I've got this lovely video of cats up right now. Everything is You're nice. in a happy place. <laughs> I'm right. in a good place with Tweetbot. Right, right. I'm still using Seismic. Uh, I've been bouncing between Twitter and Seismic uh, for uh, iPhone. I've stopped using Seismic Desktop because it's built in um, Silverlight, which is horrible. Silverlight is and, terrible. Uh, Silverlight is dying. Didn't we talk about that? Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, we did. Thank yeah. God. Oh, I'm sick. using uh, Ecofon on my original iPhone. Oh, That's congratulations! What I <laughs> you deserve a round of applause. Still it looks like yeah. the, it looks like the bandwidth on your Skype has matched the bandwidth of your iPhone. Though. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. When I had a 3G, I used. I, I'm not loading my final right now. Oh, I see. Oh, I that's see. What it is. This jacket makes so much noise in this. It microphone. does. It does. Well, you know, it's not as bad as la last week. I was doing a podcast uh, talking to some ladies that do Zumba, and they were wearing oh, the God. Zumba. They're wearing the Zumba pants. And they're around for all four podcast recordings, so I have like it was just like I yeah basically the whole time. <laughs> yes. So, so this, this is this is the essence of Zumba. It's just basically a lot of a lot of a lot of this and a lot of smiling and moving to the side. <laughs> they're so happy. I've seen them. I've seen they them. They are. They, they've like demonstrated Zumba at a few conferences and and events that we've uh, we've done. And and just, I'm just like. I'm like, who are these people and why are they so damn happy? I know we're all about positivity here, but holy crap. It's but like, they're great. Like, they're, they're, they're awesome. They, we had a good time. But thing is, like, they went right. I'm going off on a tangent. This is a big deal. Right. Uh, they started saying, like, 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 they started talking about it. And they were like, he, he this and he that talking uh -huh. about it. I'm like, Beto. I'm sorry. Who, who's he? Beto. And, and, you know, and I had yeah. a bunch of, you know, ladies in there. So, of course, yes. they went. They wanted to tell you about it's, it. Oh, they wanted to tell me I'm about sure it. I'm sure they did. Was that... Was that? But is, is Zumba is to the American housewife <laughs> as to what t Jesus is to Tim Tebow. It's just... It's just <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And they're talking about they're talking about how great the clothes are, and it's just like... Uh, it, it, and I look at it, it's all 90s. It's yeah. All, it's all 90s, like, yeah. like kind of... Zumba is, is like... I'm, but they're like, we love the clothes, it's so much yeah. fun. I'm excited I, about the idea of dancing and smiling, but I don't want anybody to know that I'm actually exercising, so I'm just going to move around quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you can pull that out. Yeah, yeah, they do, on a regular basis, and they pay people to teach them how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about and that? afterwards, it's like, let's go to Panera and get a bagel afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but seriously, they're I, great. That'll be up. That's uh, actually going to be up probably the first week in January. Wow. So, uh, but it was it was fun talking to those. Let's uh, let's, let's let's move it away from Zumba here. Away from Zumba. What were our predictions last year? Our predictions. Do you have is, a record of them? I do have a record. I listened back to the episode, even though I should have just listened in the last twenty minutes. Um, yeah, I, I well, there Ooh, we go. Hey, I hey. found my knob. I found it. Um, hey. So, and I, let me bring up the Twitter so I don't mess this up. Uh, but you had the first one. 
Okay. You insisted because uh, the the did I insist? Let's not throw the things delicious out of thing. The delicious thing. Oh right, right. Started going down. Sorry, I had to. It's all right. It's all right. You're good. Yahoo You're good. was crumbling. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and they're still slowly crumbling. It's, it's like... It's been a slow... Yeah. Every Mike, day another brick sort of falls from the foundation. You thought... I thought that Facebook was going to buy Flickr, yes. Yes. I did. And I think Chachi backed that up with Google was going to buy all the good parts of Yahoo. Mm. Yes. Because we, we've... And I also that, said that uh, RIM was going to be gone by the third quarter of this year. You are so happen. close. I yeah, know. yeah, that's not... I, I am so I'm close. there, but it's... Yeah, didn't, it didn't Didn't happen. they see like a 75% drop in profits for the third yeah, quarter? Yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, and all of the just today, I believe, all of the um, the chief operating officers of RIM reduced their salary to one dollar to make the shareholders Ooh, happy. Steve Jobs move. They pulled the Steve Jobs move. It move in the complete I'm opposite that, direction. And by the way, I'm just to that part in the book. <laughs> oh, so um, yeah. So we all thought that Yahoo was going to crumble by now, and they're still standing, and nobody knows how. There was the big Carol Bart's like CEO mix up. Where nobody was happy with everything, with anything, and everybody was angry. Was the Microsoft thing this year? Which Microsoft? Thing? Like that Microsoft was going to buy them, or was that late last year? I think that was late last year. That okay. was part of the whole they're going to disappear thing. Because everybody was like, who's going to buy Yahoo? Because everybody was making offers. And then in the end, Yahoo didn't sell to anybody. They still have the Yahoo homepage, which is exceedingly popular and the latest news as a follow-up to that prediction uh private equity firm uh private private equity firms reworking yahoo proposal for smaller stake uh with chinese alibaba alibaba is coming up a a lot in this because they want like i think they want out of it listen i got five bucks you can we're back to that you're giving it another year yeah Yeah. another year Uh, i'll I'll buy yahoo five bucks (laughs) no this didn't work with myspace yeah, that's because Justin Timberlake bought it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I forgot about that. Huh. Yeah, that's oh, another that's thing that happened sure. this year. Yeah. Justin Timberlake entered s- social media. So what else we got? <laughs> Predictions. Oh, what was that? What was that, Jim? Oh, I said it was a solid investment by JT right there. There you go. Didn't go anywhere. And, and and I actually started deleting. I You know, I've had my MySpace profile since 05. I started going through the process of deleting it. And the guilt that they put you through is... <laughs> <laughs> so it's like... You met these friends on MySpace, and, and these are friends who've not been on MySpace in years, but they actually guilted me to the point where I said, you know what, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> I felt bad. It's like you're leaving the abandoned, uh, the, it's the last day of this amusement park that's shutting down, and you know nobody's ever going to go there again, but it's like, but I have the memories. It's, oh. it's sort of like, you know, the days after Chernobyl, you go back to get your teddy bear. <laughs> 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 You're dying from cancer, but <laughs> MySpace is like warm. high school reunion. Yeah, you know, like you go back to your MySpace account, it's like a ten year reunion. Like everybody's fat and they work at Walmart. It's terrible because yeah, nobody changes. Their, it really, it really is kind of like Chernobyl. The more I think about it, because <laughs> most people just got up and left. Yeah, because nobody yeah. wanted to go through the trouble of getting. You know rid of their what? Account. I did. I, I do. If you look, it, like, it it's made, a time machine. It's a it time made capsule. Look, look active because I did at some point connect my Twitter. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. So, but That's in this trick. past year, and I don't know if it was before or after the sale, MySpace started sending me messages to my email. Ooh. Like, like the ghost in the machine is alive, mm. and all my accounts <laughs> are sending me these like really it's bad like. like it's mostly like bands <laughs> and stuff too, because yeah. that's 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 all that's left. left. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Jim Dandies have a uh, MySpace page. They do. I found out today, yeah. ironically. Really? They do. Yeah. Actually, we just uh, upgraded. Nope. We now have a Friendster page. Yeah. And <laughs> sites. <laughs> now, we have a Reverb Nation page now. We're the number one comedy geek rock band in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Sweet. Thank nice. you. Guys. Have you looked into Bandcamp? Because that is my uh, number so one so favorite website of I love Bandcamp. It's pretty cool. Yeah. If you get on there, I will listen to your stuff. If you don't know ever, you listen to, you to, listen to the listen. Jim Jones stuff that I tweeted about a while ago, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So good. Jim jo- Is there a relation between the Jim Jones and the Jim Dandies? No. No? No Only in first name? No They're the Jims. The Jims. Yeah. Jim Dandies. Go check them out. Yeah, number one. Look at that. Well, the unfortunate part is when I search for the Jim Dandies, the first thing that comes up is your MySpace Classy when I was trying version. to show off today. Well, uh, how, how, would you fi- so, how would you get rid of that? I... The, uh, delete it? That's a marketing marketing strategy, right? Put up more content. So you need to keep pushing Is it, it? Google? How did you search? Google? It was Google. <laughs> so maybe you just have to have more people linked to Live Nation, probably. I was going to say, what? Bobby, what said that, uh, Bobby said that MySpace is Chernobyl 
If Wait, when did it come up and ask Jeeves? <laughs> Is it, didn't they fire Jeeves? <laughs> they did. I think they did fire Jeeves. What are you saying, Chops? I said, uh, Bobby said that uh, MySpace is Chernobyl if the explosion was a glitter graphic. <laughs> uh, and he also he also said, I, this is from before, I'm sorry, I haven't been t- paying attention to the chat room, because there's people here, holy crap. Uh, uh, on the Yahoo's front page today, they said that RIM may be gone soon. Double relevance. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Rim is not doing it. I said a few shows back that I wouldn't be surprised if in the next couple years we I can't wait. This would have been the perfect the of... show to put a Blackberry in your hands. Oh. Do you have your Blackberry on you? No. You don't want to do that. I'm not on call. <laughs> We're surrounded by concrete. It would be so easy. Mm. That's bad uh-huh. news. That's hey, spe- speaking of dying uh, search engines, I, I know uh, I don't know how many of you guys are fans of Parks and Recreation. Yes. But did you see Love the episode it. earlier this season where like Alta Vista was a subplot? <laughs> They they kept referring to the people in Pawnee, Indiana. kept referring to the entire episode like, "Well, I looked up on Alta Vista the other night, and, and I think Alta Vista got about four references." And by the end, by the end, somebody flipped it up and goes, "Who the hell still uses Alta Vista?" <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow! I need to check that out. Hey, uh, hey, Mister Sager. Yes. Are those uh, my pictures on the on the Reverb Nation? No, no. I was at that show. Were you? And I took a lot of pictures, I think. Unless this is a new hard rock show for you guys. We had two hard rock shows. Oh. oh I think we had one with Sean and one without Sean. Do you always wear the same thing at the hard rock? We do. We wear a lot of the same stuff. I definitely took that picture. Oh, well, then maybe <laughs> I stole it. Maybe. All right. I'm just, I mean, I gave you that. Sidetrack. Just curious. <laughs> I saw the picture and I know that picture. So. Yes, I remember that face. Josh is dressed like you just that came from shows, apparently. If you pull up picture five of oh, ten. Wow. Wait, wait, look at this. Wait, we got Josh. And... See? Oh. Yeah. He's getting... Oh. Josh. <laughs> Go to picture five of ten. I hope you're on video for this, five guys. Five of ten. Five of ten. Five of ten. I'm, five on, of ten. I'm on one. And oh, I hope you're on a Mac. Taking... Are you on a Mac? I'm on a Mac. You're going to need to zoom in on Josh's face. This is how I know that I took these pictures. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Keep going. There it is. <laughs> Hold on. Let's get a close up there for you. There it is. That's how I know I That is the picture. same face he makes when he's running around third base. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. tremendous. Yes. You know, you, yes. Josh is sort of like John Mayer making, you know, because when you see John Mayer on stage, you think he's about to drop a deuce. <laughs> The secret is that he actually does every show. <laughs> Sacrifices a pair every time. <laughs> uh, it's for the art. Exactly. Uh, so what else we got? Predictions. <laughs> what did we? What else did we? Predict uh, I, well, there's only three of us on the show last year. So what did yeah. you predict? I, I predicted uh, that this was going to be the year that the virus comes to the cell phone and it'd be Android's fault. Uh, it did. Kind it of. kind of did. We it were talking about this like before. Does thing. malware count? Because, I mean, it wasn't really a virus true. per se. But when was the last time anybody got a legitimate virus? That's that. Well, except for your parents. Once people figured yeah. out how to monetize <laughs> viruses, <laughs> everything that we used to know as a virus became malware. Yeah. Which <laughs> is also covered by Norton. So that counts. Yeah. I mean, it, there you it, go. It all, yeah, it's all the same stuff. Yeah, so I mean, that's uh, I think I got a point for that. Like, I, yeah, I mean, technically, yeah, it's been around for a while. What I, what we haven't seen is a piece of malware, or I mean, I guess malware covers everything really between spyware, adware, worms, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't seen anything really take down a huge swath of people. <laughs> What's going on, Josh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I, keep, I, I keep looking up at this awkward moment where he's trying to sneak a cracker into his mouth without anyone seeing him. <laughs> like I'm, I'm looking at the iPad in the uh, in the the chat room, and I'll look up, and all I see is <laughs> sneaking a cracker. Yeah. Look, I'm hungry. Okay. <laughs> No, I have needs. I'm fat and I'm hungry, all right? <laughs> no, no, no. You're you're allowed to eat. It was just the moments I looked up were the moments you were putting a cracker in your mouth. <laughs> Go oh, for it. A cracker. Put them all in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be a man about it. Listen, it's Boston. All you can get is, like, seafood anyway, so uh, you gotta get a break sometime. Wow. And it's not even a cracker either, jackass. Or most of the chips and straight and toast. It goes to the... <laughs> 
Uh, uh, but what we haven't okay. seen is uh, is malware actually like take down a good portion of a network. Yeah, because as we you know as we depend more on the cloud and we depend more on mobile devices and like you get a new job at a company that has a good IT structure, you're going to get a BlackBerry or an iPhone or an Android device, and nobody has. I mean, even Molsec. And anonymous haven't really gone after anybody in such a way where somebody where it became a huge issue. I mean that could be even worse because somebody can go into into like the, and I don't you know maybe, you know maybe uh, Chachi knows more about this since he works in this kind of thing. What? But is that something that like somebody just hits a server in there and it just like spreads to the phones like that? Especially in a BlackBerry it can be. kind I mean, of centered a worm is a worm is a worm. Yeah, yeah, but the chances of them doing that nowadays. Yeah, it's just slim. It would have to be very planned out. Yeah, it would it would, ta- it would probably require a couple people, some very good timing, and really knowing. It takes stuff. some specific targeting, yeah. which is why if anybody was going to do it, I'd assume it would be Lulsec. Yeah, somebody with a good team of people behind them who could basically say, like, you know, if they wanted to go after like, there's a big the big Lowe's scandal going on right now. Mm. They could probably take down like the corporate infrastructure that is the Lowe's BlackBerry system if they wanted to. But nobody wants to yet. Yeah. It's one of those things. They, everything's just it, become so commonplace that it's... It's not the easiest thing for them to do versus, like, hacking their website. Right. Since it's since smartphones and mobile devices are so popular, you almost get this weird version of security through obscurity just because there's so many targets. Chances mm-hmm. are you're not one of them. Send that to <laughs> So you're trying to tell me that the days of, you know, walking up to a bank of um, pay phones with, you know, your computer spray-painted in camouflage... <laughs> and it projects are, on your where face. Where can you find a pay phone? Yeah, <laughs> I saw the funniest thing actually. Content appropriate. I was uh, where was I? I was in New Orleans or uh, where was I? Orlando. I think it was Orlando, and they had you know it's a convention center, so they would have had a bank of payphones. Yeah, and yeah. I saw where the bank of payphones was, and it was like twenty payphones long, but there was just metal plates on the wall and two payphones in the middle. <laughs> That's all that was like. Like, they got rid of all the rest. All of the rest. At well, one time, the, it was a grand payphone. It was a huge bank yeah. of payphones like you saw in, like, Home Alone, the movie. Pittsburgh International Airport, uh, I think at one point, I forget the number of payphones they had when that place first opened, but they were pulling in, you know, well over $100,000 a year in payphone revenue every year. But that's dropped off to under ten thousand dollars to the point where I think they they're pulling out just about all of the payphones at the airport. I think they're going to leave a few, but beyond that, they're they're all gone. Yeah, at this yeah. point, payphones exist as a means of contacting emergency services, and that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another thing I was talking about. You, you mentioned hacking there. Uh, we were talking about, um, I guess, this led to hacking, but um, uh, WikiLeaks. <laughs> Where's that at these days? They're, it's kind of fallen from the news because I remember they like they are at, begging for funding. Right they're now. begging for funding. It takes a lot. Are of you money sure you're not confusing that with Wikipedia? Yes, I'm sure. Wikipedia is always begging for funding. Okay. Wiki- well, no, they're at, they're at a whole new level now, begging for funding on Wikipedia. Oh yeah. Like you go there and you That's get stupid message. Yeah, you get a picture at the top well, of you somebody. Know what? There's you- a whole meme now where you you get to recaption <laughs> the guy begging for money. <laughs> well, you, you used to be just the founder. Yeah, uh, Jimmy yeah. Wells is in it. It used to be and just now the founder. It's like, now it's, I'm a pro. I'm a contributor of so many articles. These are not I'm, people I'm a, I'm that a, need to have their picture taken and put on a website that gets over. <laughs> <laughs> like my name's Joe Bob. I'm honestly a neckbeard, and I really want you to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what that says. At least Jimmy Wales is a respectable looking guy. Yeah, these yeah. other people are scary. I keep getting ladies. But um, but WikiLeaks has basically run out of money. Okay. Um. I don't know where uh, uh, Assange is at the moment, but I know that they have basically run out of money to keep doing WikiLeaks. And if they don't receive, like, they're in a position where if they don't receive X amount of dollars, they're going to have to shut down WikiLeaks. Which is kind of a shame, but, I mean, these, this stuff costs a lot of money to it keep, does. keep it does. Which is why Wikipedia is in such a bad place. Yeah. A bad $25 million place or whatever that is. <laughs> It's a good resource when I want to, you know, look up information. It's a fantastic on that, resource on that the, movie I'm watching. The, like we make all these jokes about Wikipedia needing donations, but like, what would you do if tomorrow you woke up and Wikipedia was like, you know what, guys, we're done? Yeah, uh, we would actually be well informed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I mean, can't they just go to an ad revenue or some other system like that? I mean, what was 
what, what is it? Are they like a PBS? You know, like we need you to donate money or else we're like they can get really annoying, even more annoying than they already are with the ad at the top. But they can just start selling ads. I think it. Oh, we lost it. No, I'm I'm here. I was trying to share something, but oh dear. I guess it didn't work. I think uh, they're currently a, a non-profit status, and if you were to take ad revenue, you're then for profit, and that kind of changes their whole. Because then, process. when you're for profit, then it becomes more likely that your stuff's getting tampered with. Is like the perception. Yeah. yeah. Wikipedia's uh, page for Scott Bayo said he died of diaper rash. <laughs> <laughs> Does it currently say that? Yes. Awesome. I believe so. That's fantastic. I mean, I'll double check it. It said it like two days ago. But as far as encyclopedia references, I mean, yes, you can edit Wikipedia, but it also gets edited back pretty quickly, and it's a fantastic resource. If that were just like if Google, if Google were to say, "Sorry, guys, we're not in the search engine business anymore," what would you do? What would you do? The collective IQ of the United States would drop by ninety percent. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. But I can, but I can Bing from my Xbox now. So that's dirty. This yes, it is. I could tell you last week during the um, – it was last weekend that Occupy Boston got raided, which um, – and it, it was so – we were I, – admittedly, I think from a news standpoint, a little disappointed because it was very peaceful. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> no, I mean I think we were all anticipating you know something much more widespread than what had happened. But um, I was sitting at the desk, and, and, and it was 5 o'clock. They, put, they called and said in my ear – Occupy is being raided right now. They had live pictures. So I had to ad lib, and I'm, I'm, I'm on Google trying to find anything I can on Occupy Boston, and it took me to the wiki page. I'm like, absolutely not. Because, I mean, that's happened so much in the news business where people will use Wikipedia as an easy way to get some information, and it's just so wrong. Yeah, I mean, I mean something that, like, wow. I fought this so hard in college because there are still plenty of professors who are like, don't use Wikipedia ever. The thing is, Wikipedia is a good resource, when there are footnotes, just mm-hmm. like any resource. I so a, you follow the footnote back. Yeah, right, exactly. to make sure it's cited. I had a history professor in college who said uh, his like claim to fame for the semester was that footnotes fight terrorism. <laughs> That's what he would say. He was like, you can use whatever resource you want. I don't care as long as there are citations. Mm-hmm. Always cite your work. A, a piece of information without a citation is terrorism because it's potentially spreading misinformation, which is terrorism. But Wikipedia is fine, as long as you check your citations. So if you're, like, on a mad dash for information, you're not checking your citations. So, yeah. So you're probably just making things up. Realistically. The the error is on you, not on Wikipedia. What was responsible of you, Jim, to keep Boston safe from yes. terrorism that day? Yes. And, um, I was. Yes. And then I was on the air, I was on the air for, like, um, 35 minutes. And I go, hey, Jim, uh, the Ed, the main anchor, Ed's coming in, so we're going to send you down to Occupy Boston, so... I started on the desk, and they sent me out in the field. And you know, we, I, I keep following. I keep following which you know Chachi's one man campaign against Occupy Pittsburgh, um, which which bravo to that. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, I think that's and I, maybe I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent. Here. We're talking about the way the way things, the way technologies changed changed the year and the way it affected the year. I mean, the entire Occupy movement, you know, it, it was fueled by social media and and that's one of the reasons that time magazine named the protester the man yeah. of the year for uh for well, what about yeah. egypt yeah i was just gonna say well egypt. yeah it's yeah no i agree i mean that's that's the that's the primary i think everybody assumes everybody assumes protester that's that's the first thought is occupy yeah. and so people that's why a lot of people were so adamantly against it but i think egypt i think that's i think it's all encompassing i mean these are people that you know in egypt and, and here i mean two different causes but still rallying against the government and holding truth to power um, so I think that's why, you know, it's a blanket to say the protester, but I think it kind of combines, it combines a little bit of everything yeah. because, it, because again, it's impacted, you mentioned it, social media has impacted so many different movements so far. Mm-hmm. Social media is certainly responsible for the, the outrage in Tahrir Square and everything that happened in Egypt and everything like worldwide. It's been kind of a, a giant wave of protest in which people are realizing that. Um, you know, social media has been around for a while, but it is a tool. Mm-hmm. It is a tool for communication. Well, I mean, look like, at not even just Egypt. Um, look at uh, Libya. the riots. Yeah, well, it was Libya. There riots was in London. the Park Tunnel shut down, and there was a a yeah. very serious uh, uh, thing about that because they were. Uh, the Bar Tunnel in San Francisco is their transit system, I believe, mm-hmm. and they shut down cell service in the tunnel. Yeah. to 
ward off the protesters that are going to coordinate, much like Egypt, much like the Occupy guys now, uh, protest there because I think there was something with a cop that killed somebody. Yeah. Uh, and, there, there was a cop who I mean, shot somebody. It was a very somebody. serious thing that they were protesting. It, it was all like it started with social media and then it just kept going with social media because the, the officer shot someone in front of a subway car full of people. All of them recorded it on their cell phones, oh, geez. put it out on social media. And that's the media. other thing. There's, there's the big fight up with uh, law enforcement saying, uh, you know, we're going to arrest you if you shoot us, you know, if you videotape us. Mm -hmm. If you shoot us shooting people, we're going to arrest you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to arrest you. Exactly. And then there was um, one of the uh, officers known for uh, some occupied brutality in New York City, NYPD. The spray thing. Uh, right. the, yeah, the pepper he, spray guy. He um he has a Facebook page which is public, and he said some very un unsavory things on his Facebook page. Like he forgot that the internet is viewable to people. And you know this is all something, of the people can see your Facebook. It, it, it's interesting. This is something that's been going on. Uh, you know, doing the wrestling show, which we'll be doing after here sometime, guys. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're sitting over here. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, it, it, this is something that's happened for a while because these wrestlers get on and they don't know how to act when they're not on camera in a ring. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing the general popping. And we've always said like you know, your employer sees what you say. We've yeah. talked a lot about social media with PodCamp and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now we're starting to see the effects of it more and more as more and yeah. more people are on there. As, Compared to the average person, exactly. we, all of us, use it as a tool. Mm -hmm. We are hyper aware of its effects. Well, you got to think the average person. But the average like, person, yeah. this is a, This is a new toy. This is like picking exactly. up a cell phone like, calling my friend. You know, this is this is just something for me to play with. In comparison, like, your mom gets on Twitter, we are rocket scientists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on the level of understanding we have of the ripple effect of social media and sharing information. Mm. Is this people walking upstairs? Don't okay, worry about all right. it. All right. <laughs> Can this... Is it holding? And you know, to, <laughs> don't worry. This house is completely structurally sound. And you know, to further that thought, you know, we had the advantage of Twitter when where there were only forty other people. Right. Yeah. Like when Twitter started, and we were we all got to know each other because there were only fifty people on Twitter. You know, like there wasn't the whole world. So we we learned very. We we had a lot of time to play and have our fun. Yeah. Before and, there was uh, so much noise and right. everything. Yeah. I love to tell the stories about when John Carmen and I would jokingly tweet about killing each other on Twitter. Like he would talk <laughs> you can't about do that today. Oh, and you, you couldn't do that. Yeah, right. No one would get it. And but but those were the glory days and uh, the glory days. <laughs> they were. I, I wish we could go back to that. I, you know, I was kind of hoping Google Plus would be that a little bit, but it was still too big too yeah. quickly. But um, yeah, no, that was. That I mean, was Google, so much fun. Google Death Plus. of Buzz. Death of Buzz. Death of Buzz. That <laughs> happened in a, in a class action. Class action. I didn't hear about that. They got class action. Then they for, for privacy. For for really? privacy because they they jumped it on everybody in, oh in, in, in the beginning Gmail. they had the so yeah, yeah so uh, you're going to get your two yeah. cent check yeah yeah so uh, how about we do uh, predictions for this I think year? it is prediction time so uh, let's go right. who's who's ready who I'm, has a prediction I'm not ready set? I just wanted to throw that out there is anybody anybody <laughs> I, I have a prediction you yeah. have one what okay yeah hold on, let me let me open Evernote okay so my uh, my big prediction is that you know I've been reading a lot about how Microsoft. Amazon, Google, and Apple are the big four right now. Yeah. So my prediction is that Microsoft's going to make a comeback, or they're going to make a play to make a comeback. And they're going to do it through uh, either their own social network in some form, or they're going to do it by really taking over TV and, and kind of maybe buying Netflix or Hulu or... Maybe not even, buy, not even buying rumor. them or just doing their own yeah. version. In, in, in true Microsoft form, they'll just do their own version that sucks, right? But through Xbox, they're going to try to take over. So it's two predictions in one, but Microsoft is going to make a play. And I think Microsoft's going to come back in, in a big way because I think they're lying low right now. And they'll, they'll they're do something kind of rebuilding, aren't they? System. Like with this whole, like you're well, seeing... They, the they own Skype, don't they? they, they, they did that yeah. close? I mean, I know they bought Skype. Yeah, yeah. they bought yeah. Skype. Yeah, I think so. So in that case, if if they're controlling these airwaves, good good work, Microsoft. Good luck in the future. <laughs> we that, love you, Steve Bomber. That never helps our signal on Skype ever. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no. it's gonna, it's hey, gonna, like, I think Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got to do a better job than eBay did. Because what did eBay do? What did Seriously, they do? why they're did still eBay... around? They're still making what a buttload they... of money. But they bought Skype and did, did nothing what? with it. What? Nothing at all. We got Skype on Facebook. We yeah. got, uh, you know. They those. also bought PayPal. I've seen that one. PayPal? Yeah. yeah. Well, the PayPal made more sense. PayPal's so working out. With, with I don't know days. if you noticed. People use it a lot. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> some of my business might be dependent on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> so, uh, who, who's got another one? 
All right. I don't want to pressure Sec- anybody just Second yet. quarter of this year. Whoa. <laughs> On the quarter. Second quarter. Rim Se- is going down. <laughs> mm. Mm. Like going think- down. Now, do you want to go further than that? You want to go bought? Oh, they're done. You want to go bankrupt? You no, go- not, I don't care about the specifics. Rim as we know it will not be the same. It will, okay, be, it will be the same. An un- 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 unqualified failure. Right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. On paper. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bandwagon on that. Okay. Third you... quarter. <laughs> just to make things interesting. Uh, third quarter, and um, Rim is basically going to transition into a cloud of patents that are being bought up by everybody you can think of. Okay. This patent thing is getting interesting too. Yeah. It's, or is it just it's been stuff? Interesting. And we've never really. Here's another prediction. You know what Fifteen that is? years from now, somebody might actually care about how broken the patent system is. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know what you did? You just bid a dollar. Above my price on the I Price know. is Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just I just sniped your bid. <laughs> um, it's a new car. I'm going to say, I'm going to say sometime in, in 2012, we are going to see a TV from Apple. Really? You're getting on this I'm getting bandwagon on this. here? It's, it's, not, it's not quite a bandwagon as much as it makes sense. Do you want to say what it is? Like, So I, I think I mentioned last week the idea that, like, you know, everybody really wants to see apps on the apple tv Mm -hmm. but you can't do that when there's such a disparity between display devices yeah um but if you control that like you do with the iphone it's not a problem anymore and i think we're getting to a point where people are really happy with certain form factors in their living room when you buy a nice tv it's no longer do i buy 15 to 17 to 19 a 23 a 27 a 42, a 55, or a 61. seems most people are happy, at least, in the 40-inch range. There's, like, enough popularity in large, cheap TVs that it makes sense. And if you can build that into a TV, which is something that people are already doing, I mean, you know, Samsung already has it built into their really? TVs. Toshiba has their stuff. If you build the Apple TV into a TV, then you can put apps on it. You can develop for the Apple TV without losing your mind. Because you can say it's going to be at this resolution all the time. You can develop retina, quote-unquote, display, retina display in your living room. Mm-hmm. And we already know that Microsoft is taking a huge battle on for your for your living room television. And uh, um, is Sony doing anything? Is they, Sony. Do they do a thing? I mean, uh, the Xbox always, is a huge competitor. Sony with, always seems to be... T- like, Trying to do something. Yeah. I mean, and Sony, the like PlayStation has something going yeah. on. They have their PlayStation TV, whatever. Uh, but uh, no, no, PlayStation's got like Netflix and. Yeah. But the I, difference is, um, PS3 had all this oh, non work oh, oh, oh. Don't worry about that. <laughs> something reset there. Uh, it's okay. We got a backup. PS3 up? had all this stuff from the start, though. Nobody bought the Did PS3. they? Yeah. Like, even to the point where, like, Xbox has now, or... No, I mean all of their stuff they had from the get-go. Oh, like, they had their store. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. But, I mean, between the Kinect and the the stuff we've seen with the Kinect and the idea of it being more of a controller instead of a... Like, you're not just playing games with it. You're using it, perhaps, for, like, Minority Report type stuff. Your controller. You think... you So, you think Kinect. Yeah. Kinect with, is, is with stepping Kinect. up. Connect Kinect is stepping up. I mean, the... Development in the Kinect department has been ramping up pretty steadily, and they're coming out with new stuff every day. They just came out with an iOS development kit. Yeah, how about that? I'm making a face. I'm not Ooh. camera, but I'm making a face. He's making but, a face. Yeah. Um, so I think it makes perfect sense for everybody to make a... I feel like 2012 might be the year that they all kind of put a, a lot more salt into the idea of investigating the... like the living room family system... Mm-hmm. Where like Apple already kind of has it, yeah. But not a lot of people are buying the Apple TV. It's still a, a niche product. Still kind of a hobby. And I certainly, know, if they come out with a TV, it's the finger now. It's going to be really well made, and it's not going to be cheap. Okay. And not a lot of people are going to buy it. But I think the idea is going to be something that people get really into. No, they're not allowed to. I'm also going to say that uh, in 2012, the Roku box will die. Really? Or well, then why would it or not go anywhere from where it is today? <laughs> why? Why is that? Because it's got a lot of steam. What was the last good thing? We're that came killing out of everything. What, what, because that? Microsoft is going to kill it. Because everybody else, if anybody else puts salt in this market, the reason that Roku can exist 
is because nobody else really cares about this market yet. They're, everybody's interested in the Google oh, TV. So they're kind Xbox. of, they were the first guys to do it right enough. Yeah. But somebody's going to take notice and buy them or something. Exactly. I mean, before I the mean, iPad, that's... there were tablets. Yeah. Not a lot of people bought them. Yeah. I feel like it's the same sort of situation where if somebody can do it right and knock it out of the park. Mm-hmm. Not to say that the Roku is wrong by any stretch, but it's still it's not. Good. The Roku's good. It's still not quite compatible with but, your grandmother. But I'm sorry, after this last week, like I say, Roku mm-hmm. just got replaced by my Xbox. Yeah. So yeah. exactly, I'm, I'm not even going to worry trying to get that on my network. Yeah, and there are, there are other boxes that do the same thing. Nobody even talks about it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, hey, Josh, you got anything for our prediction this year? Uh, sure. I think 2012 will be the year of HTML games. Yes. Stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's already kind of a thing in the Chrome App Store, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to gain a lot of traction, and you're going to see a lot more HTML games. I also think it's going to be the year of interactivity. You're going to see a lot more uh, connect style things out in the wild in public spaces, a lot of motion detection, mm-hmm. um, a lot more touchscreen, okay. like in public places. You can already see them at, uh, there's like a Wendy's at somewhere near where you're at that uh, when you get your coke or pepsi or whatever the entire thing is touchscreen that, that that's the, the the coke freestyle machine which there's one one in white oak and there's a few up here in boston but i i think it's the it, the technology i'm so geeked out by it is that the, the fact thing? that you can have 100 the, the different thing? flavors of yes. pop in a machine yes, yes yes we have that yeah i didn't I know that, that was down there I, the first time i saw that was at a cardiology trade show <laughs> Coke had a booth, and they were showing this thing off. Cardiology, of all yeah. Things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, get some clients. I get know. some clients. I have no idea. But yeah, I, I saw the sign. I'm like, because yeah. uh, we were passing. I was like, what's, what's this 200 flavors yeah. going on? You can here? get like your but peach that's sprite. That and, yeah. But you go in and there's like a fireplace and it's nice. I'm like, what is this? The thing is, you get a guy Why like me, here? and I'm the person who goes up to the fountain drink thing, and I'm just like a little bit of this, 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 and this. Yeah, and yeah. We say encourage a Burger King. Yeah, but I'm gonna go up to the Coke machine and be like, just. Give me all 120. So fast food technology is what Josh's bet is yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm also gonna I'm gonna throw on uh, 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 bendable displays. 2012. 1.0 in the consumer market. 1.0 of it. 1.0 of uh, of people being of like people being able to hop on Amazon, know nothing about technology, and get something worth their while and purchase it. iPad three. No. No. No iPad, Kindle, four Kindle five. Fire, combustible, combustible. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying just adding on words. I the Kindle know. kerosene. <laughs> you just go layers, right? Said that I, so interactivity is already huge in Korea. A lot of things are huge. Well, yeah. Well, we were just uh, Starcraft is huge in Korea. Uh, uh, my brother, Silent Ninja had, on Twitter, uh, he 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 gave me a video the other day. I think I might have tweeted it about a vending machine that is a see-through L- or uh, HD display. So you see all the everything, but it's like kind of tinted. But there's all kinds of. Can, can I? Can I? What would you have something about this? I yeah, have, I'm sure at your trade show. I've seen see-through uh, displays in this man's studio. He has. As a matter of fact, oh, if man. you ever get your butt over to my studio, you can see some of those see-through displays. Doodle me. Okay. Doodle me. I have I have them and they're neat. He'll do. That's there's a really great no, place on the north side that sells a lot of touch displays. They're called Core Image Technology. Um, we just had a, a really sweet demo with them again today, and we're lucky to invest in some touchscreen stuff. You can get this film and put it over any kind of glass and project on it, and it's a touchscreen. Yep. It's really awesome. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. That's the, the, um, man, it's, and it, it all comes out of Pittsburgh. I mean, it's, that's the best thing about the place where we're all, you know, we all love the uh, the transparent display thing is actually uh, it's pretty much a worldwide market at this point. Like it was in CES last year, I think. And if you like, if you Google Samsung transparent display, you're going to find a staggering amount of really dumb kiosks where people did things very, very wrong with these transparent displays because <laughs> nobody really knows how to use them yet. Yeah, well, you, you have that with every, every technology. Well, yeah, and, and it's certainly like in its in its early years, but um, mm-hmm. bendable displays are in that same class right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jim, how about you? Um. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> we little, caught him. I think this is going to be the year. I think that the 2012 is the year that that something happens along the way that makes the wireless divide a little less drastic. I think that we're going to see broadband uh, become a lot more accessible and affordable. I think to everybody, not just to to, to lower income areas, but I think there's just so much pressure. 
Nebraska's uh, coming online, everybody. <laughs> What's that? Nebraska is coming online. Yeah. <laughs> no more dial up for us. <laughs> um, yeah, I, th- I think that I think there's enough pressure on the telecommunications industry to, to start opening up the opening up the lines a little bit. I mean, obviously, I mean you're going to see a good good amount of resistance. But you know, when when NBC bought Comcast, part of the caveat of the deal, or Comcast bought NBC, part of the caveat was that Comcast is it has to provide uh, additional access to so many <laughs> Nebraska dots. <laughs> That's tremendous. That's a great website. Uh, and the government told uh, told told Comcast they have to start opening up their lines a little bit, making it making uh, internet access and broadband a little more accessible. So I think mm-hmm. you know I think I think it's going to have a trickle down effect because you know as more people cut the cord, you know I think it's just going to become uh, it's going to become as commonplace as you know landline phone service. You know, insofar as that you're still going to have that one weird mm-hmm. kid in your first grade class whose parents can't afford a phone. Mm-hmm. Um, and they like to remind everybody about that, but beyond that, it's going to be something you're going to see just about everywhere. Plus, Wad said that his predict- prediction is Nebraska's capital getting digital clocks. <laughs> <laughs> we should do an extra uh, uh, predictions for Nebraska. Predictions for Nebraska. I mean, yeah. I think that's a good and, one right there. And, and on that note, gentlemen, I actually have to get, get off the line because I have a three o'clock alarm clock that oh. goes off. Oh. Well, good luck with that. Uh, is there anything? Uh, where, where can we find you online? We don't know. You're in Boston now. Yeah, you can find me at thebostonchannel.com, or you can find me on I, the, the the Twitter, the the locate the at locate handle, and then the at locate wcvb handle. But um, that one of the nice things about about my, about the, the the company I'm working for is they're really committed to the cause of 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 of, of not just getting news online. I mean, I think I think KDKA. Uh, you know, they were accommodating to me when I decided I wanted to start tweeting. But beyond that, you know, there really wasn't a whole lot of enthusiasm for it. Whereas now I'm carrying around a phone. All to, I, you know, I have a, a phone for work with uh, with an app that we can update our website right from the phone. We can stream back live video from just about everywhere. Um, so it's you know, it's it, it's fun to see the technology change, and it's 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 kind of kind of cool to be part of it. So hopefully we'll we'll branch out a little bit more, and I'll be able to share more down the down the road. But uh, Yep, thebostonchannel.com. Excellent. Go check it out. I'm bringing it up here. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for joining us, Jim. And uh, oh, we'll- here, I'll tell you what, if you, if you want an added bonus, added uh, bonus. go to thebostonchannel.com. Okay. And you type in, type in uh, under the search box, loke, whoa, W-H-O-A. And by the way, if you see that Mike Milbury, that, that annoying jag off from NBC Sports, uh, it got busted for uh, assaulting a child here in Boston. Uh, is there anything there that says "woe loke"? I think you spelled "woe" wrong. Wait, how did you spell W H O A? Oh, actually, you see it right on the left or uh, right oh. side of the screen under video search. Oh, oh yeah, is that yeah. it? This one here, loke woe. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I don't know if I have audio on here. <laughs> um, yeah, I can feed in. I can. I can. I can. I can do the audio my, the narration myself. If that helps. <laughs> okay, uh, that's true. That's fine. We'll, we'll see what you have here in a second. It'll, it'll load up. Face. You can actually, you can actually. I mean, if we don't have the sound, I can kind of. In Belgium, oh, oh, hey, we got an ad. Wow. All right, we'll let that go in, in about thirty seconds. But uh, uh, can you set this up while we're waiting? Then, yeah. Um, my first weekend up here, there was a nor'easter that hit New England, and in the Boston area only got two or three inches of snow. But out towards Worcester, uh, which another thing about moving up to the Boston area is learning all these names and being able to pronounce things like Worcester. You know, <laughs> I went out to Worcester. It was wicked snowy all day. <laughs> As we went out to Worcester, um, there was about 10 inches of snow out there. Then a little out west, they had 20 inches of snow. But this was an area where there was about uh, 12, 13 inches of snow. And I'm doing a live shot. Pause it for a second. Let me just set, 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 continue to set it up here. Okay. Um, we just got, off a, just got off a live shot. The anchors were talking to somebody from the power company who were saying, basically, look, if you're outside, stay away from power lines. Because, I mean, I've never seen so many trees down from a freaking snowstorm than this than, than what happened. So I'm live on the air, just telling people, avoid being outside, stay away from power lines, and this is what happens. All right, we'll go to it. Came and spent the night, and in terms of power outages, still getting reports of them around here, but not as severe as we're hearing in some other area. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> All right, I think we better go at this point <laughs> as these Look trees out, keep falling Jim. down. That's it. Well, yeah, yeah, no, no doubt, Randy. So we're going to uh, 
we'll send it back to you for the time being. Wow, that that stops your heart when you hear it that early in the morning. Wow. So, and that's very typical what you saw. So they there played that uh, five or six times throughout the day on Channel Five. The severe weather promo. It's like when severe weather hits, and it's the, me going, "Whoa, whoa!" <laughs> So that was my legacy burnished on my fourth day here at Channel 5, but it's been a good one so far. So um, I'll, I'll be seeing you guys soon enough. Four, four days and he almost bit it. That's a <laughs> Boston's a tough time. I can't, wait to, I can't wait to watch a clip of you saying, are you safe in your home? Whoa, the snow is coming. <laughs> are you safe in your home? Do you know where home? your dogs are? Are you st- are children safe? Like this. Are you safe in your home? There we go. <laughs> wow. uh, sure. That's that's actually the one thing I tend to pick up accents sometimes, and I'll go to the store, and you know the woman, the girl behind the counter. All right, four fifty should change. Thanks, uh, and I'm always like, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dropping my R's subconsciously. Oh boy. So. All right. Thanks a lot, and and, uh, and take care up there. Merry Christmas. I'll see you soon. Merry Christmas. Have a good holiday. Take it easy, Jim. See you guys. Excellent. I love you, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, anytime. Thanks. All right, uh, what we got left here? Uh, did you guys uh, think of any on the uh, way, or, a, or let's a, let's toss over to you there? Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead Just kind of put stick your head in there. There's DJ Lunchbox hey, of the Wrestling Mayhem oh Show. <laughs> <laughs> your penis, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can edit that. Listen, <laughs> this is a bold prediction. I'm going to go out on a limb here, mm. but 2012 is the year that Google dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not likely, but wouldn't wouldn't you just crap your pants if I was right? <laughs> Yes, yes, I would. Not Chris, you got anything? <laughs> Why not? I'll, I'll All right. Bowl you, you want to sneak in on mine? Yeah, yeah, we, we'll bring you over here. we got to just speak into this mic here. Come on, get on oh, camera. Get on camera, camera a little bit. Just, this is Riz, also just, the wrestling man. Look at this, that camera. That, that camera. Come on. Yeah, right right here we go. Here we go. Don't fly. There we go. Yeah, my prediction is Twitter will die in 2012. Wow. Tremendous. I guess I haven't done one yet. Yeah, I think it's going to be year of the cord cutting. I think it's going to be big enough that the, <laughs> thank you for fixing. I'm glad I put monitors over there now. Um, it's nice. Yeah, I realized the e machine that died is still up there. Yeah, uh, I was up there the whole you time. You upgraded your displays there. though, so I applaud you. Well, for, it's all LCD. You know how much less power you're using in that <laughs> Enough see, power to yes, like. But I, you, have you seen the, the whole CRTs southern tip of desk? Africa? Thanks I mean, you for the extra electricity. <laughs> But uh, no, I think it's going to be big enough. The cord cutters, uh, the, the cable companies can't deny mm. it when they lose money. Especially like, with it's going to cord cutters not going to be a thing when yeah. the economy comes back, Rob. Right? What? I mean, you you heard this what? right? What? What? I think like Comcast or HBO said this. Oh, the HBO guy said that last week. Yeah. When the economy bounces back, cord cutting is not going to be a thing. It's not going to. As in, like, nobody's going to want to cut the cord? Yeah, they're all going to get their cable subscriptions back, and they're going to get their packages and their triple plays. Wow. And just get, you know, you know, it'll be in their data caps and all that stuff. It'll be great again. Uh, So back here on planet Earth. Yes! uh, They're going to be spending their money on on Apple TVs and and better internet, faster internet, not hardware. You see this? You see this random cord that's hanging here? This is how I get my TV now. Mm. That and an antenna, so I could still watch my Jim Loke when he was around. Uh, but whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa! Don't pull on that. Don't whoa. pull on that. I'm not going to quote Jim. Anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it, it swings right in front of you. <laughs> it's that's kind of weird. that's good. Uh, I'll just put this right back here. There. <laughs> just tie that around something, that. maybe. You You're fine. But uh, but no, that's that's kind of my big one. Uh, that and uh, oh, I had another one. I mean, that perfectly makes sense with the, what yeah. I was saying about the TV thing. I mean, more people are going to be, it's not just going to be, oh, I have a Netflix subscription. It's going to be, I have an Xbox, and that's how I get all of my And you're going to see, I mean, I guess it's going to be a year. I think we all see this kind of coming, but you're going to see Netflix is going to be like an HBO. Like, you're going to see that happening. More, you know? more it, like, timely it, content? It's a premium It's a premium channel. You're going to see sure. original content coming in 2013 mm-hmm. between the Arrested Development and the House of Cards. Yep. Uh, you're going to start seeing... I think you're going to start seeing... Because Amazon Prime, while not there yet, is going to become Netflix-like. <laughs> and... He's laughing at me. I mean, this is my prediction. Because they got... So your prediction is that the choice of videos on Amazon Prime is going to <laughs> improve? Yeah, no. Improve no, I think... Year. But it's going to be... These guys are going to... I mean, right now, you go to Amazon Prime, you can find most of that stuff anyways on Netflix, for the most part. If you dig very deep. No, no. If, you, if you're if you looking on Amazon, you probably already have on Netflix. Netflix.com, and you type in things nobody wants to watch. 
<laughs> You'll find the Aside entire Amazon that, Prime I watch selection. a lot of things nobody else wants to watch. I mean, the great like sci-fi channel. I know my father-in-law just watched a movie the other day where the possessed tire that was attacking people. A possessed it was great. tire. Oh, that was an awesome great. It was movie. called Rubber. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, but no, I've been mean, I've been loving. I've been watching my Caprica and my Being Human and my sure Sherlock that was about a tire. on it. I mean, it was it, there was a big tire. It's in my it's my in my recently <laughs> watched. There. But uh, I'm sure there was a sex oh, scene. Oh, Ottawa, you're doing terrible things to us. <laughs> but uh. I, but I'm going to throw it out at that. Um, so on that note, guys, this has been your awesome cast Christmas edition. Last one of the year. We're going to take a hiatus and we'll be back after the new year. Yeah. So uh, go check us out. Awesomecast.com. Have a Merry Christmas. Be, eat, eat some Satsumas. Be, sure, be sure to email us at contact at awesomecast.com. We won't answer for two weeks. Satsuma. Uh, or 72425ACAST. Satsuma. So, uh, so Rob, what Satsuma. is... Uh, well, I'm at Sorgatron.com. Let's go around to... Uh, well, the next one in the list here is Chachi. Chachi's at ChachiSays.net. Yeah, the number one watch... Uh, <laughs> never never going to get over that. ...on... Sorgatron Media. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, we got, uh, of course, Rob. What's up? Rob I'm gonna, I'm gonna amp things up and say I'm working on so many things I can't say a word about right now. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately, Excellent. they're just piling. I feel really bad. You come to the studio. You, if you know me personally. Doodle me. Doodle me. You know, I try to use that doodle, down. but nobody else knows what to do with it. They just think that you're being like, what is really this? offensive when you say yeah, doodle exactly, me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're I all, that. You just walk up to girls on the street and you're like, hey, doodle me. I, I, I doodled this guy on Monday and he hasn't done it. He hasn't doodled me back. <laughs> hey. Hey. Wow. And then there's Norm Hulesman of iTwixie. Yeah, so you can find me at normanhulesman.com or I, I'm, uh, you know, keeping girls safe online 24 7 at iTwixie.com. So. <laughs> we have great things planned in twenty tweens. Let's let's be honest. Tween girls. Tween, tween girls. Tween girls. I'm tween girls. Like, hey, we did good this episode. Hey, we, we made good. up for we the last episode. Yeah, Chachi made, had thirty seconds before we got awkward. Yeah, we made absolutely no jokes. No, it was. It was it's, fine. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's fine. It's great. <laughs> it's a good job. It's the a girls good job. like. And I actually, okay. I have actually some really exciting projects I'm working on that I haven't been talking about, but I could, I could talk about them. I'm doing a two blogs. One's about children's books, separate from my Tuxie. It's called Keeping It Real with Children's Books. And uh, a friend of mine is reviewing children's books, and she's starting a blog. The other one is an advice column, and her name is Sally. And her last name is Sally. And so Sally Sally. So it's like Ask Sally, right. So Sally Sally, it makes perfect sense. And so she's got a great personality, and she loves to give advice. And so I will be announcing those sites when they're, they're ready for Is this public. advice about anything? Pretty much. Like, I mean, she's not going to be able to answer any tech advice because she doesn't know anything about that. It's like, you know, like, let's say, you know, we have an awkward moment and I don't really know how to, like, talk right, to you about right. it, you know? And I'm like, we were talking about stuff and then Norm grabbed my chest. And I just, <laughs> I thought I was doodling yeah. you because we just talked about that, so I thought right. it was cool. And then and then I realized that that's not what we we're talking about. So now I'm uncomfortable and I don't know how to. And Sally can give us advice. Sally can help us out, right? How to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me how to pave your driveway? <laughs> what? Pave a driveway. You could pave try. Driveway. She, she would try to help you solve your problem. She would use Google and Wikipedia to point you in the right direction. She's like, first you gotta get some cement and then uh, mix it up in a <laughs> wheelbarrow there. And... <laughs> so, Josh, please save us. What's going on with you, buddy? Uh, 2012 is gonna be awesome. We're self-publishing a book. Um, we're working on some really cool creative projects and there's gonna be a whole lot of screen printing. Nice. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's it. That's it. That's it. This has been your awesome cast. This has been the last of your awesome... I don't know how to work a switcher because I've been drinking a little bit. Uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be on like LB all night. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks for the awesome chat room showing up here on a Friday night. And we'll be back in 2012 every Tuesday. Join us at 7 p.m. Eastern at live.awesomecast.com. Right? That works now. Yeah. Or, yeah, 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 that yeah, works. Yeah, that yeah, works. That's, that's a thing. That's a yeah. thing. Um, and uh, we got plenty of stuff coming up at Sorgatron Media. Some tremendous stuff. So keep tuned there. There'll be some announcements very soon as soon as I get some contracts signed. Ooh. So keep an eye out there. And uh, thanks to our awesome chat room. You have been our awesome audience for about two and a half, or about a year and a half now. It's been awesome. Have an awesome year. Holiday. Holiday. Have, Holiday. have an awesome year. Not man. a whole year. Not I mean, for the rest year. of I mean, the year. year. Yeah, we'll see you guys I'm next not time. Back.
What, uh, what is Loki doing? I, He's motioning with his finger. It's is concerning. He? <laughs> Did he lose something? He looks like it. He looks like he lost I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't hear you right now. <laughs> yeah. I can't hear anything. No, I couldn't hear anything there either. Oh. Oh, really? Uh, you guys okay? Yeah, I hear yeah you. you were like fading in and out. Oh. Oh, it's that thing. That thing. That thing. All right. All right, we'll, we'll roll with that. Scene. Yep, you're gone. So, um, yeah, it's gone again. It's gone, gone again. It's gone again? Yep. All right, we'll do an edit point here. Edit point. We'll figure out what's going on. Uh, How drunk are you? <laughs> hey, uh, I might have bumped something. Way to go. The funny thing is, we could just be moving our lips. We could be. For the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. And have Siri read what we're saying. Big just to mess with them. They can't hear anything. No. Can you, can you hear anything? Ha 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 